Welcome back to the Talos of EV podcast, everybody. I am joined by my two inferior co-hosts who are not Tesla owners, Nick <laughs> over here and Drew. How are you guys Uh-oh. doing, you peasants? Ra- Randy, Randy, you got a little ego right here. Uh, sorry. Just a little. <laughs> ah, hang on. <laughs> Mm. Just about. Sorry about that, guys. There you hey, go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. As, as you drink your Starbucks uh, expensive can I'm, of Starbucks, <laughs> I'm judging you all right now. <laughs> it's all in a can. Hey, I, we didn't get to talk about this last week, so I just want to come out the door swinging with this subject. Hyundai confirmed they were talking with Apple about developing an EV. Has that changed their opinion on the Apple car and its validity or its existence? Or yes, how did you view that? I am. I could not be more thrilled to hear this because remember when uh, Apple teamed up with Motorola to make the iPod phone, the iTunes yeah. phone, yes, in uh, 2005, and how mm-hmm. perfect that was, and how zero <laughs> problems it had, and how it was just the most in-demand device, even though they only said less, sold less than 10,000 units. I am seeing those vibes right now. Apple is all <laughs> about be vertical that. stack integration, control over <laughs> hardware and software, and then partnering with an ancient old automaker is just. Ew. Ew. It does feel kind of weird. Put a weird taste in your mouth. One of the... Uh, oh, I thought that was the double shot energy drink here. That was in my <laughs> mouth. Um, one of the uh, first cars I ever drove for a long period of time was a Hyundai. And let me tell you. Me too. This ain't it, chief. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, what did you the, not like about it? Just the fact the that the Hyundai wasn't a Tesla uh, uh, Elantra was the uh, was the first car, two thousand seven. Yep. I'm not super familiar with that brand. Is it like known to be cheaper, or are they okay? To be or fair, or what's to, the to deal be with them? to, I'm gonna try to be as unbiased as possible because my bias is against it. Okay. Um, but to be fair, uh, within the last decade, uh, so I've heard. Hyundai got got their act together with with their with their vehicles in the sense that um, like they have they have one of the best warranties out there mm-hmm. next to I think like Kia or something like that where they, they have a to 10, answer 10 your year question warranty. Nick they've been known for being pretty affordable I've I've seen it referenced okay. in books of like whether you drive a Lamborghini or a Sonata and I'm always like hey yeah shut hey. up that's <laughs> me <laughs> no yeah they 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 had they 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 were just. Are they known to be like good, affordable? Or no, no, they are not whatever? Hondas. Okay, they are not right. Nissans. Okay. They're not I, Toyotas. I mean, okay. okay. Speaking as well, I'm, a, I'm not familiar with them, so that's probably. I'm means. very familiar. <laughs> My family has okay. bought and owned three Hyundai vehicles, which is more than any other brand <laughs> they've ever bought from. Wow. And we have friends with uh, Corollas or Civics, and the main reason we went with the Sonatas was because of. Uh, for one, yeah, we, we bought we bought them all secondhand, so they were pretty affordable. But for two, they had way more trunk space than most uh, mm-hmm. affordable sedans of that class. So they had a pretty massive trunk, which we still have used, and um, that's one advantage I'd give it over like a Civic or a Corolla. Is it feels pretty spacious, but it's still pretty compact to drive. But I, I think we might mm-hmm. be coming at it from the wrong angle because I think Apple talking to Hyundai is kind of similar to samsung building displays for the iphone you know it's like a mass production outsource it's not like hyundai's gonna be designing so it. out of all i would rather i would rather see apple talk with like subaru <laughs> as a as a company because i'm actually being specific i have a I have a very, very, I'm not a mechanic. I don't know if you can notice by my very baby <laughs> soft hands, uh, but I am not a mechanic. But uh, I have I have friends who are You've probably never changed the oil in your car. You are, you are <laughs> factual. Uh, I've pulled out the dipstick and go, yeah, that smells burnt. It needs to be replaced. Where's no, the no, dipstick? No, no, the Tesla. Yeah, that was my, that was my We're talking job. about the Tesla. Oh, the Tesla. You've never oh, changed you've been talking about the, I've never, the I've never changed oil back dipstick. when I. Oh, really? You've never changed oil? <laughs> I've never changed oil. Oh, wow. No, no I, even I've done oh, that. Okay. No, I, I've, I've thrown my money. I let you fix it you, with your dirty hands and charge me. Eight, I know. <laughs> you I just know. offended half of our audience. That's okay. I cannot That's believe it. you, Randy. Andy. That's okay. Jokes, people. Welcome to late <laughs> night at eight thirty six in the morning. Jokes, late. people. These are jokes. This is a joke. Um, so Subaru. Uh, I have friends who are mechanics now. Uh, one one of them uh, works for like 
uh, 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 Caliber Collision, uh, Pep Boys, other ones like dedicated uh, uh, Volkswagen. What they all say is in, in unison that of cars that have come through their shop that they worked on is that uh, Subaru has more tech in its vehicle mm. than m- any other uh, make. Mm. That just, uh, and not tech as in like NFC, I'm saying like, uh, Power, power windows and it just all the wiring that when they have to take off the door to get in there, there's so much going on in there. It's less mechanical and more electrical. Mm-hmm. And so for those reasons, like I hate working on Subarus. They hate working on because it it's so electrical. Um, I would rather see Apple partner with somebody who's more like in that realm than mechanical because when you get more mechanical, you have to kind of really it feels less Apple at that point. It become more Hyundai, as opposed to where if it's like, oh, you're just going to use Subaru's, uh, um, whatever. But it's it's Apple's juice that's bleeding through it. Hmm. It would feel more in line with like a Tesla competitor. I I feel like once it becomes more mechanical and less electrical, it, it is that Motorola or whatever that you were yeah. referring to. Like I feel like you start to become more in that realm. Uh, than being able to have your own say. Now, design-wise, like Apple can make them be, be designed in California, built in China. All you want, that's fine. But I, I, I feel like uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I am biased against Hyundai as their person of or their uh, company of choice. Well, they do really? make EVs. Okay, if I, to be fair, they make all electric crossovers. I, exactly my point. Also, with my point, they make EVs, <laughs> and I've seen their EVs. Okay, quite frankly, people, <laughs> their EVs are not the best. And my real bias is Apple should just, just Tim, whatever the heck you're doing, just go talk to Elon, please. <laughs> just they can't afford. Well, you Elon know what now. the uh, cheaper, uh, cheaper than your Model Three uh, Hyundai Kona electric EV uh, electric car That's has disgusting. That uh, you know what it has that your Tesla doesn't. Shame. CarPlay. <laughs> oh. Ooh. <laughs> a a seventeen thousand uh, dollar Nissan, uh, whatever that one is. Yeah. Versa. Pa- yeah. Has CarPlay. You're right. And your Tesla does. Fifteen thousand dollar Spark has. CarPlay. And my Tesla doesn't. But you know what my <laughs> Tesla has that no other car has? Everything else that matters. <laughs> Self-driving. <laughs> no. was, you know what? Self-driving. I was going to say, like, not yet. The highest respect. <laughs> <laughs> we got to wait for the that The highest beta. respect in the industry, both in economics and in manufacture. And they were all built, made in the United States of America. Because I'm proud to be an American. Where at least <laughs> I know I'm free. I love that song. I'm I'm very patriotic this week, guys. I don't know if you know this. I I went down a rabbit hole of Marine Corps memories, (laughs) and I've been very patriotic this week. I just felt like sharing that. That, So, Drew. What? What do you think? Oh, we know what he thinks. I think it confirms. His voice is bleeding through his ears. (laughs) It confirms Apple's debating entering the car market, which I think is very interesting that we are finally getting. You know, this isn't a leak. It's not a rumor. It's not like some analyst report. It's like an actual Hyundai spokesperson that came forward and said, yes, we're in talks with Apple. Um, so that it, it proves a lot of what maybe people are talking about. But I just think that because all the timelines are so far out, my prediction is that Apple is still going to end up not going through with it and instead just incorporating more of their software on other companies' vehicles, um, kind of like they already have. But I, I was I curious like to pick... the Motorola thing again. I would compare. I've seen that comparison brought up a lot. The the iTunes phone with that Motorola. I, I would compare yeah. that more to what Apple is doing with CarPlay and CarKey now. I would say that's Ooh. that's a bit hmm. more similar in line car because key. it's like I forgot about that. That's a thing. That oh. is a thing. <laughs> it's about time somebody else came up with the concept. Full access. Thanks, Emily. <laughs> I think it's a little. <laughs> I think it's a little more clunky than what Tesla already figured out which is just like the car unlocks when you walk up to it now it's like hold the phone up to this you know part of the door and then it's terrible send someone the link like, it's like it's, no you just walk up the way up. tesla the way tesla comes up and just does it now is is so seamless 
And 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 yeah. I I do I do believe that's what Apple's trying to do is make it seamless. And I think we will see the Tesla equivalent of that when they make their own vehicle. But mm-hmm. until that happens, I think for security reasons, because it, it's not it's not just all Apple at that point. They need to have some type of uh, you know NFC equivalent with open up wallet or what have you, and go up to it like that. If it was all Apple, I can see it completely. I, you know, I can even see it be more authenticated in the sense that, um, like, you know how Apple Watch on our wrist, once it's already unlocked and it's on your wrist, you don't have to do anything else when you do Apple Pay. You just click and go. Yeah. Even when you got your mask on, you just, oh, that feels good. I don't Apple Pay with my phone at all anymore. Or, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, at all anymore because I just, boop, boop, done. I could see something like that happening with an Apple car where, uh, where, Tesla sometimes, sometimes it doesn't happen often, but when it does, it's kind of annoying. It tells me I, I still need to put my key card uh, yeah, in the center yeah. console to sure. to uh, start the car again, even though I'm ready in the car. It's unlocked because it knows I'm there. It won't it won't start. It won't turn. It's like you need, it's like uh, you know, please put the key here. Mm-hmm. Is that like a safety thing? Like yeah, sure it's still you. Yes, so, so, sometimes sometimes it doesn't know if I'm the actual the one who opened the door. Hmm. Um, which is weird because it I obviously am. Yeah. Cuz I opened the door, but it it doesn't it doesn't register my phone as being within the proximity to start the car. So I can go up to the car while I'm near it, open it, and then I can stand outside my car, someone else sit in the driver's seat and they can't drive off cuz my car my phone needs to be inside the car. That's the key. But sometimes right. it doesn't pick up the key. It doesn't pick up my my phone. So I'll say please put your 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 key card. Mm-hmm. I can see, and and that sounds like an easy fix, but I, I, this has been going on since I've had the car, so I think there's more going on than just the end result of please put your key here to start the car. Mm-hmm. Um, so in my opinion, there's 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 more that's going on that's causing that to trip, and I can see Apple doing something that eliminates that issue altogether. The same way uh, with your, it's like how great airdrop is or how great uh i was using the apple pay with your with your phone like or it AirPod just sometimes switching. it just works you know it just works flawlessly it's, airpod switching works a little too well <laughs> is this a tech podcast well, well i, mean, I want to so, go uh, my, my this this simile i'm trying the simile i'm trying to draw here is that if apple can make a seamless integration of you outside of the vehicle and you being in the car i think they actually have the capability if they ever go forward with this i think they have that's the one thing that i think they can outshine tesla on Mm. tesla has the great supercharging network they have the great range they have everything that makes tesla tesla but i've always complained about the ui and the user experience about things that just feel kind of like redundant even the way it's driving i do believe apple Entering the EV space, what they will bring to it is a true seamless experience where it, I think it will be the best driving experience with you interacting with the, the, the hardware of it and it trying to authenticate you and start the car and the way maybe even change things and stuff like that. Um, I think that's what Apple can bring that will make Tesla be better at that stuff. Mm. So do you, do you think, think Apple? Go ahead, Nick. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just asking if this report or finding out that there might be some validity to the rumors going around, like, does this make you think that Apple will one day announce and unveil their own car from the ground up that they've designed that someone else is going to build for them, kind of like, you know, the, the rest of their hardware? Or do you think it's just going to be mainly a collaboration where Apple just tinkers the software and, and the driving in-car experience um, on top of someone else's platform. So it'll just be this next Hyundai Kona Electric has, you know, Apple Interior or Apple Pilot. Apple Edition. Like, is something. it a collab or is it going to be like a Apple come out at Worldwide Developers Conference with a car on stage and say, we built this and this is ours? Is it a pusher, though? <laughs> is it a pusher? Yeah. <laughs> is this an air power? Um, is it an air power? Just some renders on the screen. Um, yeah, I, I could see that happening. Which? Um, Which one? The the collab the, or no, their, no, 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 not not a collab. Okay, I just that a full stack like Apple just rolling it out one day and being like Apple Car coming next year. Mm. And start saving because it's going to be one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And yeah, I, I could see that happening, but yeah, I, I, I don't think I don't think Apple would do a collab. 
all that to say. I mean, they've done it in the past, but I don't I don't think they'd put their next big thing into a collab category. Mm. Like, mm-mm. I think they would. I think the first gen would be a collab. Really? And a future generation might be their own in-house the same way uh, Intel processors were chip, uh, the chip that they went with for, for decades before they made their own. <laughs> so, so something um, a bit more fancy than CarPlay? A bit more... Oh, yeah, yeah. I think everything would be... I, I I think the your your Siri integration like CarPlay is the default already with or without your phone there CarPlay is the is the the is the skin that we see throughout all throughout the whole interior mm. the exterior will be whatever the collaboration is with, with this I mean Hyundai then Hyundai but do you think um, they just manufacture it though? Like, we, it, from our perspective, it might not. Look I think like the design would change. I, 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 by collaboration, I don't just think that it's like, oh, Apple does software, you do, you do hardware. What? You're good. Your Siri was on for a minute oh. there. <laughs> she, <laughs> she knew what I'm talking. Um, but I, I, I think there'd be, I think there'd be like a Hyundai Apple edition or something like that for the first, for the first version of it, the first collab. Mm. Um, I think because it's the safest route because it's going to be so expensive. It's not. It's not hundreds of dollars. It's tens of thousands of dollars. I think the safest route is to have a collaboration the same way Goldman Sachs collaborated with the Apple Card. Mm. The there, there's but there, it, but from the user's perspective, the Apple's not marketing it as the Goldman Sachs Card designed by Apple. I know, but it but 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 that's what it is, and it's still a collaboration. They still got their logo on. Not there. from the marketing. They still bring them not, up. Not from the. Not from the marketing perspective. Yeah, but that, you don't, you don't, you're just talking about one department of marketing. I'm actually talking uh, uh, end product of it at the end. So legal, the legal part of it. Goldman Sachs is I'm, on the hook. I'm not. Too. I'm not saying the I'm Apple gonna, car is going to be made by I'm, Apple in Cupertino, like with a factory. No, it'll be outsourced by someone. You know, maybe it's Hyundai. Maybe it's you know. But you Goldman think, Sachs logo is right on the. We're car. not going to get a might be, yeah. The Apple logo, Gigafactory. the Hyundai logo might. Yeah, we're not going to get an Apple Gigafactory. Yet. I don't think we would. That's why they moved their second headquarters to Austin. No, they, no, no. They no. were ahead of the curve of, of a <laughs> Tesla. <laughs> well, that's their they, offices. What that's we don't know is that that's, Drew put out a video asking what's going to be the first thing made in Austin. It's going to be the Apple car. This no. is the secret collab we've been talking about. No. Secret collab between Tim and Elon who still haven't had a meeting. I yeah. see. <laughs> no, nah, they're not. Of course they've had a meeting. Guys, you, come on. Elon took the meeting or t- uh, Tim took the meeting with Elon and they've talked since then. They didn't talk in 2015 or 2016. They've talked since then. Nah, I guarantee I it. I doubt it. I guarantee it. it. I There would be a lot I, more well, collaboration sources, between the two my companies. My sources tell me <laughs> it's We would me, have CarPlay and Tesla if there were talks between <laughs> those two brands happening. Exactly. Who's to say it's not coming? I actually think I wouldn't be surprised in 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 some later model, uh, some later version of the same models that we have now, that there would be more. There, it starts with bringing Apple Music to it, <laughs> and then it open. What you Apple is sneaky. They plant a seed and they start with music, and then their little dirty ecosystem starts to engulf the whole thing. That you're next. Thing you know it. You're an Apple sheep inside of a Tesla vehicle. <gasps> What's going on? I don't understand. And then. <laughs> Then, then they'll lose their exclusive contract with Spotify, and it'll go off of the little app or the the screen as well. And then you have your car play. Sure, that'll happen. Wow. What we- <laughs> yeah, I don't think that'll ever happen. Um, but in the same in the same way as Foxconn makes iPhones, you know, it's not Apple who's making the iPhones. I think mm-hmm. I think from the end consumer's perspective, it's going to be the Apple Car made by Apple, not not the Apple Car made by Honda, or the the Apple edition of the Hyundai Hyundai Xterra or Sonata or whatever. Like, Kona. it's it, it's not going to be the Apple edition of it. it. It'll be its own thing. It's like everything the user sees is Apple. Yeah, branded and just Apple like with design. the Apple Card. You don't yeah. know you have you don't only only savvy people know that they actually have an account with Goldman Sachs. Right. Well, they don't. They don't. Card. Most go to Goldman see it Sachs the website. Wallet. They don't. Yeah, you go to the Apple app yeah. in the Apple iPhone. You know, if you're, well, could you make you that really, argument that it would only be an interior thing then? In that case, it would be like everything you touch and use on the inside no. of the car is from Apple, but the outside, that's done by someone else. 
everything on the inside and outside that the user sees. Now, maybe under the hood, yeah, all that, all the drivetrain, all the battery stuff's going to be. You know, Could you not agree whatever. that that's a collaboration then? No, that's like Apple designing it and making it. It's it's no more they, collaboration a collaboration than Apple a collaboration, and Foxconn, in my opinion. <laughs> we don't say the Fox. A collaboration iPhone. is when exactly a collaboration is when the CEO of Google gets up on stage and starts talking about how they made uh, Google Maps, or uh, the CEO of Intel and how they made the uh, Core Two Duo processor. Like that's a collaboration. A product is where Apple just says, hey, we made a thing. We worked with some other companies product. kind of you know, in the background, but we made a thing. Hmm. Product. I think Apple making a car, though, is very... It's, it's... Unless they... I trust, however it happens, that if they come out with an EV, it will be designed by Apple. It's going to have its own design. But much like a Jetta... Is an exact replica of an of an Audi. Hmm. They have the same shell. It's the same family. Mm. An Audi is just luxury leather interior, more premium connectivity, and everything on the inside. It's the same. It's it's the same chassis that they use. Hmm. Uh, a, a Jetta and an Audi A4 is the exact same. Um, if you go under the hood, you can find. It, they're just just look at side by sides of. I, I used to do this for. Because I was bored, I went on YouTube and I and it's the same parts. Um, and Jetta's Jetta, Volkswagen's Volkswagen, Audi's Audi, because hmm. that's the branding. It's the same parts. In that sense, it's not a collaboration because it's all owned by the same company. Just like Toyota has Lexus. I, we talked about that last week. So it's it's, it's like it, there's a there's a parent there's a parent uh, company involved in that stuff. And unless there's a parent company involved with Apple, I, I think I struggle with the concept of like I can't. It's not that I'm I'm married to the word of it being a collaboration, but it's two separate entities that are coming together to help make something. And and I, I'm not trying to draw similarities of iPhones or Apple cards or or Moto, I, iTunes phones or whatever. I I think just. The sense of them trying to get into the industry, they have to reach across the board, so to say, or the aisle, or whatever the saying is, to work with somebody to get mass produced because they can't come in raw by yeah. themselves. They're, 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 they'll be too small. They need to work with somebody who's already established. And I think maybe that's another reason why I struggle with Hyundai. Like, if you're going to get with somebody who's established, I can see Ford, you know, being somebody like, let's work with Ford. Let's work with uh, GM. Well, Ford already has their EV right built and stuff they don't want to well i mean but so does hyundai and i and maybe that's why i want them to work with tesla too i like the idea of apple reaching with somebody who is already established somebody who has presence here and no your your face already distracted me (laughs) (laughs) what if the model s and model x getting pulled from showrooms and the redesign is actually the Apple Tesla. <laughs> we're getting we're getting the Model S and Model X designed by Johnny. Oh God. The from price Love would Trump. make sense. The price would make the sense. The price the price alone would make sense. <laughs> the exactly. price would double by the time they announce it. <laughs> what if Johnny secretly went to go do that? And I know. Stepped, Love from is just a front company he, for he, Tesla. He left. He left <laughs> Apple to go help design for it. Apple and and. The price would make sense if if Apple and Tesla were to collaborate. I I agree that it would be a Model S or X equivalent in that sense that it has to be the higher end first, so they can keep their branding. And Tesla could be like, well, we still got cheaper versions too, and mm-hmm. you know everybody wins. I can I see think that. I, I see that. That's why my face lit up. It's, it's a great idea. That's on Tim, a big get on it. Uh, wish. That would be on my wish list. I don't know if that would be on my I prediction agree. though. I agree. <laughs> I agree. What if Apple bought yeah. Hyundai? Ooh. They can. <laughs> What's their market cap? You know, sixty billion. I, I took that as a joke at first, but then I paused and like that actually. <laughs> they tech. Text- it if, would if be Apple one of the largest the situa- business transactions in history. But <laughs> if the automobile <laughs> industry the money. was, yeah, if if the industry was where they were in two thousand nine, in the sense that they were hurting and they were looking for a, a buyout again, the way the government had come in and help help them out. I can see Apple stepping in and be like, no, 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 don't worry about it. We'll, we'll take care of you. <laughs> and then they slowly phase out all Hyundai branding. <laughs> and then they, and they put and they put uh, Dr. Dre in charge of it for a second, just <laughs> yeah. for marketing purposes. Yeah. And then they remove him. Right. <laughs> that probably won't happen, but 
<laughs> Did you check the market cap? It, it could. Oh. You know, uh, like, Apple buying one of them out outright, that would be big. Is that anti-competitive? Is that some antitrust, some monopoly? It might. It, it, would that... Maybe. It might be, probably huh? Probably would be. That's a little weird. bit. Because of how large it is. They probably wouldn't get that antitrust problem if they bought a smaller brand like Lucid because they're so small and they haven't really been present in the EV space. So it's like Apple's not competing with Lucid. I think that's what antitrust doesn't like is when you buy out your competition. So right. um, they're not really they're not really competing with each other currently. So if they just went straight to... Uh, no cars to now we own a car company. I still think the Lucid thing's going to happen. It makes too much sense to me. Like hmm. the company is small enough that the, the Apple could buy them out without you know draining a huge portion of their bank account. And Lucid is going for such a premium, such a high price market that it would be low volume, low volume enough for Apple to be like, oh yeah, it's it's like rare. It's like luxury like it's special you know it stands apart from the everyday vehicle we want people to turn heads when they see the apple car or, or the lucid with apple software that's that's just what i still see happening is that they're waiting for them to get established deliver a few vehicles see if they're profitable or not but I, my guess is that's the their... second mouse gets the cheese right. <laughs> exactly <laughs> If you're listening to their podcast, we're just that's called coming full circle. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's Second it. Second mouse gets the cheese. I still think that's what's gonna happen. I, I don't believe I think Lucis is a very pretty design. Yeah. I like the it's very pretty. It is. I like it. It looks cool. I, I wish them the best. I, I hope they can there's talks of them wanting to go public currently, and I want them to avoid that as long as possible. <laughs> but like sure. through some reverse merger, there's rumors they're like oh maybe we should go public capitalize on this ev stock bubble i'm just like no please <laughs> <laughs> it'll be like the dot dot com bubble where the dot uh, ev bubble because i don't i don't yeah. want i don't want rivian <laughs> to go uh, go under i don't want i as much as we talk about did you see prime trucks are on the road i did oh did you hear I them did. man rivian I didn't hear them. I saw them. The noise they make is so weird. No, no. You should look it up. What is it? It sounds like God, um, (laughs) but in an annoying way. It's like, it's not a pleasant sound. Uh, No, if you look up Rivian truck sound on YouTube, you'll probably hear it. But uh, I'm doing it right now. I think there's only one. I don't, unless you guys. Well, they had a Rivian prime truck is what I saw. I saw someone tweet a picture of just a prime delivery truck. It's one of those Rivian prime delivery I saw it too. I'm just not sure how many there are. What what was the search? Rivian what? Truck sound. I don't know. I just, I saw it in an article and I was like, why is it so loud? (laughs) It it makes like a, um, uh, maybe not truck, maybe Rivian van. Um, Rivian van sound. Yeah, I think it's the first. Let me pull it up here. Okay, got it. Got it. Let's see. Oh, that one's not. Let's hear it together. Noise. There it goes. <laughs> oh, Is that wow. a speaker? Yeah. It sounds like God. <laughs> Just a... Dear Lord Elon. Oh, that's wow. We pray for a vertical that's... screen in the Model that's... S. <laughs> we pray for the Cybertruck. Hey, truck. real talk though. Whoa. See, now it sounds like a VHS tape. <laughs> Like tracking. THX. <laughs> it sounds like an late eighties, early nineties, like uh, info. Like, hi. To connect this thing, you get, like uh, they had <laughs> yeah, those. Yeah. That feels like the However, the waiting room to get into heaven or something. <laughs> purgatory. <laughs> yeah, purgatory. <laughs> when you're waiting for. I'm not gonna lie though. That Amazon, like, it still looks kind of. It if it didn't have to go up in pitch. Like my like my poor dog ear is gonna go like this. Like what's going on? <laughs> but if it didn't have to go up in pitch, this oh, it did sound kind of relaxing. It sounded relaxing. Yeah. Well, I wonder if that's if, it's is too that loud. Three hours later, you want to kill yourself? Yeah, I was gonna say it's way too loud in my opinion. I don't think they need to make. Is that like is that the speaker that like the EV requires? Yes, like noise it's a speaker, pedestrian. Or is that like the electric motor? Pedestrian okay. law thing. It's not the sound of an actual motor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they could definitely turn it off from the software if they wanted to, but it would be less legal, I guess. We'll just make it different and less like a... Yeah, Model Kevin. 3s have some. <laughs> I don't think Randy's has it, but I've seen some of the later generation ones that have a little backup sound effect. Um, it's a bit more futuristic and, and subtle. It sounds like a UFO. It's just kind of a weird... 
I put in reverse. Move. Well, if you if you got the boombox mode, you can change it to any sound you want. So you could make it uh, Randy music if you wanted to. You could load it on. I heard somebody. You suck, Nick. Every time you honk the horn. Nick, 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 Nick. That would be great. Every time you go in reverse, it's just Nick, 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 Nick. I saw someone make it the bruh sound effect. They're just driving around and it's like bruh, bruh, bruh. bruh. And someone made it move. Gentlemen, get out the way. (laughs) Mine would just be do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. it. I heard somebody use the covenant drum drum sequence Uh as their. uh, there you go. Nick has no idea what we're talking about. Nope, not a clue. They That's use like it. they use the Covenant drum track. What I need is the Millennium Falcon. I would like oh. to see if I, like I could that. use any sound. I would use the. Yeah, <laughs> that would be loud and move. I would want. I, I feel like genuinely that would, get would use an R two. Well. <laughs> For, not for me. I feel like no. after a while you'd be like, some, I, I would honk at somebody <laughs> just to see people go, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Just jump. Just jump. Hmm. You know what's fun? How annoying would that be if I was to use my own music and like I'm just tr- like I'm just holding down like I'm just trying I'm doing a sound check right now. <laughs> I need to make sure it sounds good on all the speakers. I'm mixing right now, don't worry about it. <laughs> your your model three doesn't have the external speaker, does it? It does. Oh, it does? Then you but can you do all Model 3s, too. The, uh, yeah, all Model 3s have them. Mm, I think some so. people I don't. Th- yeah, my- I was seeing, like, Mike didn't get one on his Model Y. Like, it was after a certain mm. time. I don't remember the time was. But if you bought before a certain period, they don't have it. Really? Wait. So if you're, does your car make a noise when backing up? It can. And, yeah, you should be able to, if there is that speaker, you should be able to change it. That was part of the new holiday update. That was the boombox mode. You can load in your own music files. I'll take a look. I'll be honest. I, when I get the updates and I read through the, the patch, I'm just like. It's not the one I wanted. It's not the one I wanted. <laughs> Where's this the beta? This ain't the update I'm looking for. Yeah. <laughs> we need yeah. the beta. Yeah, you should be able to then yeah. if it can. Hmm. I gotta. I, I feel like I, I'm so picky. I'm so picky about things that you know what I would do just to kind of buy into the whole branding of what the car is. I would probably just like put something like Halo themed on there or something. There you go. Something. Mm-hmm. I would use the Talos of T sound. There you go. <laughs> since since half of it's from Halo anyway. So uh, every time exactly. you honk the horn. Yeah. That'd be perfect. I like that sound. Like that. That's out of all the things I've made, hours and <laughs> hours of cataloged music. The Taylor of T is the thing that I like. Going back to like, I like that. That was well, all, that was all innovation. Most of the fans on the road will just be like, "Where's Drew?" <laughs> yeah. Well, if, it won't if be they mine. know that sound. Yeah, if they if they know that sound and they look and they and they see not Drew and they don't know who I am, they are not fans. <laughs> <laughs> they have to know the podcast. If you were to do this over again, let's say Tesla was ahead of schedule with production and ahead of schedule with pricing in the Model Two, or on the opposite side, you decided to wait to buy a Tesla several years later. Um, if you were not an EV owner, but you wanted to get a Tesla and the Model 2 was a thing, okay, so like four doors, five seats, same cabin space as a Model 3, but no frunk, and it's a hatchback, so there's less cargo space, but it was like, you know, cheaper, would you end up going with the Model 2 over the 3, or would you have still gone with the 3? Um, I'll give you... I know what my gut reaction is, but my only question is, uh, what is the battery looking like? You mean like range? Yes. Um, well, better. Th- I guess the base model would have to be better than 250. Let's say long range is comfortably over 300. So equal okay. range. Over. Th- okay, equal range then. I honestly... But no dual motor. If I had to do it... O- no dual... Okay, okay. Ooh. That's my guess with the Model Ooh. 2. It'll be rear-wheel drive only. That that makes sense. That does make sense. Um, to entertain it, if being completely honest, if I had to do it all over again, I would go with the Model 2. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. It's not the reason why you think. <laughs> <laughs> Clickbaity. And he, the reason, the, the results might shock you. 
<laughs> what? Um, the, the idea of having a hatchback is very, very enticing to me. One of the reasons why I actually like the Model Y um, over, and actually, the, I think, te- I guess technically the Model S, too. Uh, I, yeah, Model 3 is the only choose, non-hatchback. I love, I, I, I had a hatchback for a long time, and I hated hatchback. <laughs> and then it wasn't until, and I it wasn't until Brittany had her Yaris, and she had a genuine hatchback, hmm. that I actually learned to appreciate and love the hatchback. And even though it's less cargo space, onloading and offloading makes all the difference. The paranoia that I've gone through, I tried to put a bicycle in my Model 3 uh, end of 2019, Jeez. and I was... And I was really uh, screwing with the rap at that point. I was like, "Oh my mm. god!" And I had to stop. Um, and I, I couldn't. I couldn't make purchases like that. When I bought this desk, um, I had to use a friend's truck because it, this was not. This would not fit in a regular trunk, but it would have fit in a hatchback. With a hatchback, you could drop the seats down mm-hmm. the way uh, Britney Jars seats go down. So mm-hmm. hatchbacks are just designed different where you can make room. And most of the time, I'm the only one driving. Right. I don't need the back seats like that. Mm-hmm. So having a hatchback alone at that price is very enticing to me. If, I, if, if, it, if we're talking same range with battery, if we're talking it's still a five-seater when I need it to be. And obviously, I, I would assume I get my same premium connectivity with the sound system that I, I, okay. I like using in the Model 3. Mm-hmm. If all that stuff is not compromised and it's the same product, so assuming I don't get power trunk, assuming I don't get USB-C even, Assuming it's exactly what I have now, a USB A, because it's cheaper and it's and it's it's not a power it's not a power trunk. I don't think that they I can't would make do with that. the. Uh, well, I know, but but. Well, 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 be cheaper. I meant older. I meant older okay. model. But assuming what I have right now, convert it to a Model Two f- just to get the the hatchback. I would do that. My hesitation, though, to be a little devil's advocate is I've learned to really, really appreciate uh, all-wheel drive. Mm. And dual motor is something I don't think I can go back on now, if I'm being honest. That is mm. a deal well, breaker I- in the sense that um, I don't want a vehicle that's just rear-wheel drive ever again. Just for acceleration? I can feel the acceleration and the fact that um, I go up to the mountains from time to time and moving through different terrain, like snow, for example, you don't need... Uh, chains on your tires or something like that if you have all-wheel drive. I have been in a situation, I know it's debatable, but your snow and my snow are different snow. That's true. Okay. That's why I gave you yeah, yeah. passable yeah. okay for a cow. Our snows are different or, snows. Or, or. <laughs> I think my snow... Up in Alaska, it's different, okay? Up in Alaska, I wouldn't put take the Model 3 out <laughs> anywhere during the winter. But, so, but, but, uh, uh, all-wheel drive, the dual motor is amazing. I wish... We had the option of rear-wheel drive long range because that battery range is really cool. Um, I like the power that comes with dual motor, so um, I would t- I would do it over again. I would get the Model Two if that was accessible, and I didn't. And this is my first EV yeah. because price of entry is cheaper, mm-hmm. and that's why I went with the Model Three over any of the other models a couple years ago. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. How about you, Nick? Would uh, yeah, I still get the Cybertruck? What? <laughs> I'd still get the Cybertruck. The choice is still Cybertruck. <laughs> what if there's a 25k uh, four door Cybertruck too? 20... Yes, I'd do that. Yes. Would you like cash or cash with that? <laughs> would you have any interest in the smaller version of the Cybertruck, or do you want the full size? Would it depend on the price? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 Um, full size Cybertruck or bust. Uh, my current car is what's called a subcompact. Your current SUV, car is the bust, which means that I don't fit <laughs> the car. The current car is the bust. That is, that so is true. the bust. <laughs> Cybertruck or bust. I am busting right now. Yeah, I'm busting my butt off, making money so we can uh, afford that Cybertruck one day. Um, oh, yeah, uh, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, Cybertruck. Yeah, I'd, there's no way I'd get a smaller Cybertruck. Okay, uh, I would not want the international. Even version. if it's just three percent smaller I can't or something. Fit in it. Like, Whatever Elon said initially. If it's just, <laughs> yeah, I am, I am 
fifteen percent bigger than the tallest people <laughs> in the world. So, you know, combine that with the twenty three percent of the other people. I you know, I'm what if the smaller side I'm truck? curious. I forgot how tall it is. I'm about to look it up, but do you remember, Nick? The top the the top peak of the Cybertruck is just over six feet. What if the, what if the else. smaller Cybertruck was like ten thousand cheaper? Yeah, because then okay, it's then it's, it's only the discussion 3%. of do you want a Cybertruck that's small or do you want nothing? Okay, but then it still comes down to my three thousand dollars off of FSD that I have locked in. Mm. So well, okay, but it's the same scenario. Assuming that, that none of that had ever happened, okay. like for me, I, I'm coming in brand new into the game. <sighs> assuming I, think I still want the big one. I'm sorry, I I I'm a big boy. <laughs> I, I I I do big things. <laughs> I have big, big things. Boy. I need big things. <laughs> okay. Big boy want big truck. <laughs> I'm the opposite. Uh, I don't, well, I don't well, like big truck. Let, let me. Let, I, same. I, I would go with well, the smaller. That's your fault, Drew. Let me, that's your no, fault, Randy. Let me throw it's a to my uh, let me throw a, I get it cheaper, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> now, what if what if at this time now, different scenario, Rivian is fully accessible? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. No, right. no, no, no price of the Rivian All, could convince you. If it was free or they were giving it to me or it was like, I uh, know, let's, be, let's, or let's be realistic sure. with it. Yeah, okay. Is, <laughs> no. there, is there a price range that would make you? There's a price range that would make me consider the Rivian. It's, it's a, it's a, it's I mean, between, if it was $5,000, then yeah. Uh, 20 and 30,000, I would consider a Rivian. If yes. they could, if they could, yep. get, even if it was like 250 mile range, I don't care much about range. If I could yeah. get an R1T, which I think is like, Four times cheaper than it actually is, but if they somehow range on a normal truck isn't that good, so I'm I don't have expectations for well, an yeah, EV truck. Good enough like for that. I don't plan on towing things across the country. It would be mostly for weekend projects and that kind of thing. But if I just was looking to get an EV with a bed that was a pickup, and if it was between twenty k and thirty, maybe thirty five, <laughs> so I could swing it. If the then the Cybertruck and its all its great benefits and supercharging and steel, then that becomes a premium. Right now it's the opposite. It's like it's a benefit and it's better. So and it's cheaper. Yeah. So it doesn't stand a chance. But yeah. And boy does it draw your attention when you see a Cybertruck. Oh, yeah. That that is big time. Mm. If I could just do the Mandalorian Boba Fett update to it and put like a new dark coat Ooh. of green on it, uh, an actual paint it green, not not like the wrap of the Tesla, but do that to that, and 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 now it's the Warthog from Halo, or it could mm-hmm. be the uh, uh, the the Boba Fett's uh, Slave One ship, or anything like that. like that. Just feel like I want to take that Cybertruck, and we're gonna go through all the mountain terrains just to say that I did it. <laughs> I'm gonna go let it get you know nooks and crannies bent into it and i'm guys i'm i'm really excited about the cyber truck <laughs> that's good i'm, I'm excited, excited and I'm i don't guys, even I, guys i'm getting excited about the cyber truck <laughs> i get pumped thinking about it <laughs> driving on city streets or people taking delivery like i'm i'm thinking about it an unhealthy amount of time for someone who's not getting one so <laughs> it's just fun because you can see its about. potential yeah and it, how how it'll turn heads for sure. How it'll honestly. Make people here's my fear with Cybertruck. My fear in a good way, though. This is my fear in a good way. Um, I fell in love with driving again because of the Model Three. That's what Tesla did to me. Tesla made me love driving again. Um, and I look now for reasons take to go away. do. <laughs> no, I look for reasons to do, always get in my car and go do something. And it's always an experience. It's never like I don't want to be here. It's crazy that like after all this time i can say like i think i'm out of the honeymoon phase and this is just my new love of driving the vehicle because it's so simplistic and it does most things that i wanted to do Mm -hmm. my fear is Cybertruck will make me never get out of the truck (laughs) like i i in the back what what i don't what i don't show what i don't show on the show whether it's recording or whatever is is my genuine like i'm nervous about how excited i am that that I secretly don't want Britney to cancel her reservation, and even though it's like, oh, it's her car, and what that like, I, I'm gonna buy that truck off of her. <laughs> oh, it's like, <laughs> it's like it's my truck. You gotta go, and she's gonna take it to work, and I'm gonna get mad. I'm like, no, 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 take the Model Three, and she's gonna be like, no, that's your car, <laughs> and she's gonna make me hate the Model Three because I will find reasons to go do something. Like, hey, you need help moving, Drew? Uh, I'm 
I'm so far. Like, oh no, all right, just get, I'll, I'll be That'd there. Be I'll be there in ten hours. I'll, I'll come you know, up with I'll a reason a to move if we get to move with the Cybertruck. <laughs> What's that? You need help picking up your building a shed? I'll be right there. Oh, right there <laughs> is ten. Like, what do you mean you'll be right there? Give me, give me, you know, twelve hours. I'll be right there, and I'll come help. I will find reasons to take the truck out and do things. Onward, like I'm babying the the Model Three because I want it to last a long time. The truck. And maybe it's the the mentality of a truck. That's the thing I want to go. I want to take it out to the desert and 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 take a quad out there. I want to go up to the mountains and go hiking with it. I want to do all the things like those promo pictures show. Mm. I actually want to do those. I'm things. gonna lose so if much I'm, weight when I get my cyber. <laughs> then I can go out <laughs> in the environments and run and walk. <laughs> Sit in the air conditioning. <laughs> I can't wait until they make air legal again so I can go outside and and just. <laughs> well, it sounds like, in my opinion, from what you're describing, you're working from home, obviously, because you're now full time you're making music you're uh looking for excuses to drive and you're worried that when the cyber truck arrives you're going to be fighting over who gets the truck who gets to drive it who gets to take it here who gets to use it if it becomes a financial question of okay our delivery's ready i don't know if we're going to have enough money i don't know if we can afford such a large purchase right now would you consider trading in the model three to offset that cost because you're going to be at home anyway so you can either drive your wife to work help uh make the cyber truck more affordable just have one car as someone who's been a one car couple for a long time now that's got all the functionality that's got all the practicality and if it becomes a i'm not sure if we can afford it then model three knocks down i don't know how much 20 30 000. in the moment I would say I would consider it, but even in the moment, I don't think I can ever pull the trigger on it. Mm. The Model 3 is my ultimate favorite car. That is my dream car. I, Brittany has like re- reminded me when I would show like almost remorse sometimes about having it. Mm. Um, thinking like, ah, you know, the pandemic, like especially last year, it was so hard on us that I was like, I, I don't think this was a good idea. Maybe I should consider selling it if it can help us in other means. And she would remind me that like, no, you, you've wanted, I've, she, I, I've, for as long as I've known you, you've always talked about, te- like you've always wanted this car. You worked really hard to get to this point, And this is the fruits of your labor of you committing to something so long-term that you saved up and I did everything the right way about buying the car. And she does not want me to get rid of the car. And I, I will tell you, I'll tell everybody listening that I have considered selling the, the car um, a few times within the last six months. To the point where it's just like, before she joined the military, I was thinking, it's like, can if I can, if there's anything I can help with, with, with her business, it's like, I'll sell the car. Um, there, there, there is a level of priority of what takes precedence. And um, I'm not above letting go of a tangible thing like that. Um, we found a way to make it work though. And she said that, you know, like this is, this is your genuine dream car. And I got it so early. Like I peaked way too soon. And, um, <laughs> but it's, it's like when I express excitement, of like driving and finding reasons to drive, like that's, that's me being as honest as possible that I can't see myself ever having another car because I love it that much. Mm-hmm. The functionality of a truck is amazing, and I don't want it to be either or. I would love for it to be both in a way that I can't see myself not being financially prepared to buy a cyber truck outright. If I don't have the cash, I'll never do a loan or a lease. I don't ever again. I don't need to. Don't want to. Um, my my rule of thumb of buying anything going forward, and this is something that you know her and I had talked about. And maybe this is getting a little too personal with finances, but if we can't afford to buy it outright, we shouldn't buy the product in the first place. And that's been our rule of thumb for most things uh, as need be. So I don't see a scenario where I should offset one thing to pay for the cost of another. The only contingency to that question though, Drew, is if we go overseas, chances are we can we can only bring one car. Mm. One car is rated on orders that the military will pay to move yeah. overseas for you. Anything over a, an additional vehicle is coming out of pocket. If that's the case, and it's, in a, it's a situation where Cybertruck is ready and we can buy it right now, which one are we taking? I would rather take the Cybertruck. Yeah. So, I don't think I would want to sell. I don't know if it would fit in some of the destinations yeah. you want. Well, to. you find a way. You find a way. <laughs> I mean, right. I, do you that, want just... to drive a cyber truck in a different country, depending on the roads? There, I do. You know. Oh, I do. The parking I do. spaces. Because and... I... 
people I, in Ireland said it literally wouldn't fit in their roads. So <laughs> it would cover good thing both there's lanes. no Air Force bases over there. Okay, well, good. <laughs> Wherever it ends up being. I just mean, I'll, obviously, I agree. Ideally, getting both would be great. But if the situation presented itself where it was one or the other, you would take, you would take the Model 3 over the Cybertruck. I, it's not that I would take it. It's that... Um, <sighs> I know the Cybertruck is newer. It will have better stuff internal and external. Everything about it from battery to ports USB to display. <laughs> That's the main thing. To USB-C. Everything. Everything about the Cybertruck will be newer and therefore, technology-wise, better. But full self-driving is also a thing that considers like no one's ever going to get that price of, of 6000 Yeah. And So you can I factor that in if like, you sell it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keeps yeah. your resale value up. What do you think, Nick? What should he do? Yeah. It's such oh, a hard What should Randy do? Oh, in my professional opinion, Randy <laughs> should sell the Model 3 and get a Cybertruck tomorrow. So that's not, my I profession. thought Nick was going to say, why have, why have neither of us entertained the idea of two Cybertrucks? <laughs> why, yes. why have we not considered yes. <laughs> one for Randy, one for Brittany? <laughs> one for Brittany. There you go. I like this idea. And one for the dog. I mean, we need for three Kiko while we're at it. <laughs> <laughs> Have we not considered this? I bet if they... I, I think I they need probably to consider won't. this more. But if they ended up making a $39,000 Cybertruck, I bet your Model 3 could cover most of that. Mm-hmm. Do you think so? Really? If you, You've got full self-driving, which has gone up f- almost 100% since you bought it. Um Almost. And it's going to continue to go up by the time the cheap Cybertruck comes out. So the fact that you've bought it, and so far it seems like Tesla is keeping that with the car. Um, So if you decided to sell it, the next owner would get full self-driving. So you could incorporate that value that's increased, and you've wrapped it, so it's probably at least underneath that wrap really clean and well taken care of. So if it's a long-range dual motor, you know, it's got good performance, it's going to be a lot faster than the uh, rear-wheel drive Cybertruck. So that's a compromise you'd have to put up with is the the range would be a lot lower and your 0 to 60 would be lower. But you could <laughs> you could have two Cybertrucks, which would take up your entire <laughs> living room and garage at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> There's definitely no yeah. room for it. There's not room for one, let alone two now. But... Um, no, that's just a No, it's okay. You can just let me borrow it permanently. Yeah. <laughs> permanently. Like Do you know how many people have uh, volunteered? Hey, Randy, if you go overseas, I'll watch your, I'll watch your Model 3. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> so many people I'll have stepped it, up. I'll, I'll add my name to that list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think every I, listener. I have, I, n- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if I'm just talking IRL people yeah, yeah. that I know, I, I, I no exaggeration, I have at least 10 people who have said, hey. I believe make you. Make that 11. Make, <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. Makes sense. And like, but no one will protect it as well as I will. Because you know it'll be sitting there at 50% for weeks not being driven. So it's going to be at the perfect battery uh, standby mode. And it won't be on big freeways. It won't be going on 30-mile commutes every day. You know, It's just going to be in a box, uh, uh, restricted and protected from the weather. And there won't be rain or anything getting on it. It'll just be sitting there getting software updates. And that's it. And g- drive five so, miles once a year. If you if you let the Model Three come with me, <laughs> okay, then go ahead. I live up in Alaska where it's really cold, and <laughs> cold is good for lithium ion batteries in no. long term storage. No, it isn't. No, no it's, it's bad. bad. Oh. I get warned. It got so cold here. Surprisingly, San Diego got so cold. I got a warning I've never seen before on Ooh. my phone and on my display of the car that, that uh, it put the, uh, the the snowflake indicator on the battery, uh, indicating that uh, the battery was actually hurt, hurting. That if I start it now, because it was at like 17%, it's like mm-hmm. you're really closer to this. They, they uh, allotted that if I was to charge it at full capacity, full capacity would only get me like at 83% or something like that. It, it already indicated. And it had... The battery, and then half of the battery was blue with the little snowflake, and, and it's like, oh, this is, Ooh. it's hurting. I'm huh. like, oh, man. So, okay, well, I'll here. move to the warmest place in the world. It won't happen here. <laughs> <laughs> I will move to the warmest place in the world just Death to look Valley. after your Model 3. Yeah. Death Valley? Death Valley, yep. <laughs> we'll I will move to Cerro Gordo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, Death Valley. Uh, that might be a little too dry. Yeah, I, don't want, I don't want anything to melt in the car. <laughs> well, I'll put it in air conditioning. Mm. 
What do you uh, think, Nick? Yeah. Is it a bad idea to sell the three for a truck? or? I mean, I don't think so. I think you should keep both. Well, obviously. That's um, our plan A. We're talking... Yeah, I know, but no, 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 no. Seriously. Seriously. I mean, plan B, I guess, not get the Cybertruck till you're ready. Okay. Um, Just wait. But I, I think... You know, you and, you and Brittany want to, you know, start a family at some point, and mm -hmm. that will require, you know, more seating capacity and more different vehicles. And being a one cup, one one car couple probably wouldn't be quite as easy with, you know, some kids or you know whatever mm -hmm. life going on. Um, so I think it would make sense to keep the Model Three because you've kind of already taken a lot of the depreciation of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously it's a Tesla, so there isn't a ton right now. Um, but it's you know your car and it's your dream car. Mm -hmm. I think I think you should keep that. And it's your first Tesla. It's it's, it's gonna have sentimental value as well. Sure. Um, now when the Cybertruck is you know out and you guys are ready to buy it and you know if if you aren't ready to buy it when your reservation comes up, well then you're more than welcome to one of my reservations. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think we can transfer like that. No, you can't. Well, well you would have to. There's to a complicated you. way you could do it. Oh, there is? There's the transfer Nick the money for the truck. Nick buys it and then sells it to you for a dollar oh. or something. You know, you could technically. Yeah, and then I get stuck with all the taxes. Thanks. No, I mean, you that. can. Thank Randy you will so pay much. for everything. <laughs> you get the tax write off. <laughs> Randy could reimburse <laughs> you for the taxes and no, all you'd that. Get, but you get no. You can't transfer just yeah. the reservation, but you could buy the vehicle and transfer the vehicle to someone. That's what you could do. Well, hey. Hmm. That is that is a possibility, and we'll add that to the bag of possibilities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I think I think you you and Brittany Randy would be served well with two vehicles, um, and the Model Three and the Cybertruck are two very different vehicles, which fill different roles, yeah. Yeah. which is perfect. They both got a screen. Yeah. Because, Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> they, they both drive themselves. Yeah. But yeah. the the <laughs> Cybertruck is there to help move and move things and get things move moved. Lots of and things. it's like it's it's a work it's a work vehicle, right? But if you're gonna go on a road trip, you gotta get the nice little compact efficient vehicle, which is the Model 3, which you already have. So mm. I think both the Cybertruck and the Model 3 coexist very well in a Tesla ecosystem. I think a Model S and a Model 3 do not go well together. Mm. Model Y, Model 3, eh, a little too close to go well together in an ecosystem. But the Cybertruck and the Model 3 are different enough where it justifies having both at the same time for a multi-person household. Well, I'd still agree. That's a well thought out answer. I like I it. Mean, <laughs> I, I'm team both if possible. I'm talking if that's not possible. What what do you choose? But yes, well, then you wait on until top of that. Yes, just if you can wait long you wait enough. Until it, wait. So my takeaway that Nick in that scenario, Drew. My takeaway, Nick is saying, uh, don't get the Cybertruck. Stick with what I already have until you can get the until Cybertruck. I can get it. So so that that would be not to trade it in. Well, all right, okay. Drew. What do you think? I think you, I'll play devil's advocate. I say, yes, you should. <laughs> if you're in a situation where you have to make the call between do we keep the Model 3 or do we use the money to put towards a Cybertruck? Ideally, yes. If you can afford both, amazing. Great, do that. But if you can't, um, I would say uh, pick the Cybertruck because it's the, the Swiss army knife of Tesla's. Uh, you you can... just want B-roll of the Cybertruck, don't you? <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> I would love that. But uh, that doesn't just benefit me. That benefits Randy. If he does a video series about, hey, True, here's my Cybertruck, uh, here's my experience with it, I think that would financially for your work and your channel perform much better than Model 3 five years later. You know, I, I don't think that will views wise do as well or be as interesting because it's so saturated whereas like you didn't buy model 3 in the first wave you weren't in like the 2017 one of the first people to get a model 3 but i mean you're not in texas but who knows maybe you could be by at a later date you could be in the first wave of Cybertruck owners we, we put it on our wish list yeah <laughs> so it could happen and i think that the display is going to be bigger and my prediction is that similar to like uh going f from uh, an older iPad or an older iPhone to a newer iPhone uh, in the size of the interior display on the Cybertruck and probably all the more futuristic tech they put in it. I think that once you get it, the Model 3 will become a lot less desirable, even if there is a nostalgia factor and you've owned it for a long time. 
we can still have that towards tech we don't like very much or use very much on the regular. You know, I, I could get nostalgic about an old phone or an old iPad. I'm like, man, I used to do this on this. Or, you know, I, I pick mm -hmm. up my wife's old iPad Pro that I got way back in 2017 sometimes. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember this thing. But I don't use it every day. And I think you could run into the same scenario with Cybertruck versus Model 3. You're just both going to be fighting over it. And then it's like, well, <laughs> whoever loses Rochambeau has to take the Model 3 <laughs> because <laughs> everyone wants to take the Cybertruck because it's so cool and it's so much better and more futuristic. And it's going to be more of like a top to bottom future world apocalyptic experience to get in the truck. <laughs> whereas the Model 3 is just like, all right, we're getting groceries. Does your opinion change or does the stance change? Because uh, if, if you just to remind, uh, we have a reservation for the tri-motor. So does that still stand? Or do you think yeah, that's, you get the cheaper no, Cybertruck? My, old, my whole argument's built on the tri-motor, which I think okay. might have some advantages with you know how your Model 3 battery is going to be aging by the time Cybertruck is ready. You're going to have a fresh that's battery. Right. Especially the tri-motor. Yeah, <laughs> tri-motor with range well over 500 miles, I'm sure, I think will cover. You know How long could you... <laughs> go on a camping trip or go up into the mountains without plugging in and that kind of thing. And the Model 3 is we'll just see... going to be like this shorter range burden. <laughs> that you're like, Ugh, <laughs> I'm so used to EVs that go 500 miles. This one's like barely hitting 300. This is, how did I ever get by with only 330 miles? Ugh. Yeah, that's what it's going to be. Do it's like think... if you went from your iPhone 12 mini to an iPhone 4. You'd be like, I used to live with this. Like this was my norm. Yeah. Like I think that's the experience you'll have with the truck. Do you think we'll see a tri-motor Cybertruck before we see Roadster? Or do you think we'll see Roadster first? Ooh. Well, Elon said they would Cybertruck. do the truck Elon first. Elon said Cybertruck. Yeah. So yeah. I think... Well, he said... I remember him saying on like Joe Rogan and, and subsequently after that that Cybertruck will come first, but tri-motor Cybertruck. Mm. I I'm think talking that, about the motors. Yeah, I think that might be the first... I mean, it's... I, I, it's a hunch I have, but it's a guess. But I think it's a somewhat reasonable one to assume that... Um, the lower tier cyber trucks are going to be more complicated to make profitably and also elon has said in tweets and stuff like it's not going to be easy to mass produce it's it's built it's not built like any other vehicle so it will be a challenge we don't we haven't built a vehicle like this before no one has so if the stainless steel pinching and the mass production of the exoskeleton is ends up being somewhat complicated and hard to mainstream at first they would most likely want to start with the higher profit margin which is most likely the tri-motor because they can comfortably charge 770 grand and most people are probably getting fsd with it so 77 grand on each of those models and they can secure those extra profit margins when the factory line is just starting up so i feel like some of the first cyber trucks they build could end up being the tri-motor there's a different part of me that says you know they don't have a lot of experience with tri-motor and they've the prototype they've shown is a dual motor so they know that exists so the range is mm -hmm. a lot more achievable and, and realistic because it's like we we've built it. it it's a thing whereas the tri-motor is a bit more like well we've done the math <laughs> it should work this is what we know and uh, they might need a bit more experience yeah. from the Plaid Model S and collecting data on that and figuring out, oh, okay, here's here's how accurate the range estimates are. Um, so once the Plaid Model S is out and they have experience with it, then they're like, okay, now we can bring that to the truck. But yeah, I think uh, Tri-Motor has a good chance of being like the first ones that come out. I feel like, I, I, I do feel like Dual Motor would be the first one. Yeah, that's I, reasonable just, too. That seems the, the, most, the most stability uh for a higher profit margin is the dual motor and i and, and i feel like dual motor is the the size that fits most for needs mm, there's probably. there's a market for people who want who want the single mark uh single motor um i mean you guys are are, are advocates for the single motor and yeah. then britney's on the polar opposite like she wants the tri-motor and i feel yeah. like the perfect me i middle. want all three yeah <laughs> well you do have a reservation but uh I, I i would but i think the dual motor is the perfect in the middle for everything it's your all around well functioning one, and I think dual motor Cybertruck. I believe that I, if that would be the first one that we see over single motor or tri motor, mm, probably. Um, 
There's a good chance of that. I, I think single I motor think would definitely be last <laughs> or never. <laughs> they might just not do it entirely. Kind of like, well, it's hard to say these days, you know, because Elon was like, no, we're not yeah. doing standard range wide. And then they're like, eh, never mind. Here it is. So now that <laughs> yeah, it if, it, if Elon follows a traditional, you know, starting price, you know, Model Y was three grand more than they said it was going to be. Uh, Model 3 was two grand more than they said it was going to be. And that means single motor Cybertruck would be 43. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's not bad. <laughs> that's still yeah. worth it to me. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty torn on the middle between which do they build first. I think it'll depend on how ironed out the plaid powertrain is by the time they're ready to mass produce the Cybertruck. It'll be like, okay, are we mm. confident we can mass produce the plaid powertrain? And if not, then they'll start with the dual motors. But if they are, then I think they would most likely want to start with the highest profit margin truck possible. So, and there's a lot of orders for them, I believe. I think that yeah. the reservations for dual and tri were pretty even. They were pretty neck and neck, whereas single motor was like 20% or less than 20%. So, that's exciting. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. I'm looking at the website of it right now, just at the interior and everything and <laughs> the bed. And I, I hope those seats are anymore. modular. <laughs> you can't do it anymore? I can't look at it the hurts. Tesla Cybertruck <laughs> website too anymore. Much. No, I just get tired of changing my pants. Oh, my God. <laughs> Every time. I, I, I will be excited when we get to see a final, final version. Mm. Yeah, we never got that like, update with like weight and like yeah. final range. Yeah, and, like, I, 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 I appreciate mirrors. the prototype for what it is. It's really cool. Yeah. It's great. I want to see how the Tonto cover works. I want to see the uh, solar thing. I want to see, see all of it. I want to see the final, final. Yeah. Like this is what day one is going to look like. Yeah. Real day one. I want to see that one. I hope that's this I, year. That, me too. I think that could be Me too. maybe if deliveries aren't this year, maybe they could give us at least an updated look of, you know, the tweaks we've made and the mirrors have obviously got to get ready soon unless the law changes. I don't think it's going to, but um yeah, just just he said we would get in a month or so like a Cybertruck production update and it never happened. So thanks Elon. Oh. As always, getting our hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Thanks, Elon. Elon's leak on uh, leak track or Apple track score is, no, is very low. Not good. I think. Uh, no. I, I sometimes forget about the fact that it's all armored glass. Maybe that stuff is a lot harder to mass produce than we think. Hmm. They haven't really made that at scale before, have they? Oh my God. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't be opposed to them leaving that off. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, I, you didn't sell I mean, us on I, it very I, I good I can't at the remember. event. <laughs> yeah. Don't you want that armored glass? glass. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, my God. You can use the glass you've used on every other Tesla <laughs> that no one seems to have a problem with. Well, like, yeah, Model Y, yeah. Model 3 glass, that's fine. I've never once looked at my car's window and said, I wish you were bulletproof. <laughs> I never once looked at it and, and thought, I should throw a steel ball right at it. Yeah. Didn't Dead go through. On. Didn't go through. Huh, I didn't go through. <laughs> Either way, I'm going to be upset yeah. if my oh window my is shattered. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over his reaction. That reaction was so genuine that he went, ha, oh. like, <laughs> he was so shocked. This is love. And then he just stood there. Sweat all over his face. <laughs> and he's like, let's skip through the next slides here. Oh, yeah. oh, we made it. He like was pressing the clicker at like full speed. He was like, yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on. And the whole time I just turned the truck around. I know. Just I know. something. Oh, I know. They just oh. would have backed it. And little did we know, way. we wish that could have happened again because that was the cheapest it was ever going to be for buying Tesla I stock. Know. Oh. That for was a while. It. Yeah. For a long time. Mm. Yeah. If you would have, I saw some metric recently about people who reserved the Roadster. If you would okay. have, okay. If you would have put the money you put down on a Roadster into Tesla stock at the time the Roadster was announced, you would have oh like my God. three million dollars now, I think, in stock. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> so I, someone did the math on it. It was like if you, the the price has nearly, I think it's more than ten x since the Roadster unveil. 
another fun fact. One of you brought it up. I, don't, I think it was yeah, one of you. It was okay. If you got the gifted free roadster and you have to pay the taxes on it. I literally cannot afford a free roadster. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that very literally. I cannot it's afford about a, third a free roadster. Because it has to be labeled as income tax, not sales tax, if you win it in a giveaway uh-huh. type thing, which is why a lot of people are like, what? This YouTuber won two free roadsters? They should give one away. They should do a giveaway. They're not going to do that because most people are selling their second roadster, sell the second roadster to cover yeah. the price of all the tax. Because if you win two, you still- <laughs> that's going to be like $160,000 in income tax. So you have to sell one roadster for more than that. Probably you might have to pay tax on the sale of that too. So you're going to sell yeah, one of you your would. roadsters. You do. God. You do. <laughs> just to offset the cost. Basically, you can only get a free roadster if you get two. If you don't get two free yep. roadsters, it's actually like eighty grand. <laughs> Which, or you could sell rides in your roadster. That was the other idea that I had. Put it on Turo. To counter. Yeah, no, no. Just like I wouldn't trust people on Turo. I'd be like, okay, for thirty oh, dollars, <laughs> I'll give you a zero to sixty in one point nine seconds. Oh man! They just I, have like a little every weekend event. Here's thing. your eighty thousand dollar free gift. I can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't afford it. Why can't that? you afford it, Randy? It's free. No. I, well, I think you know, the income tax part definition. would be in the next. Uh, it would be the next calendar year of when you take delivery, yep. right? So you could it take delivery, be. film a bunch of videos, and you can drive it around, and then sell it and use that money to cover that the cost it blows of the income like, tax. Do you know how much anxiety I would have for that year? Like, <laughs> oh, this yeah. YouTube channel has to blow up. This video has to get a million views. All these has-tos need to happen. And then I still need to sell the thing. <laughs> well, even if they don't blow up, you could still sell it to cover the price and probably oh, make some money. Because you could pay the 80 grand in income tax and then have and then 120, buy <laughs> have 120 grand left over, like, put that towards Applied Model S. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> or just wow. get a the anxiety truck. that comes out of out of that's like here, here's the taxes you have to pay on your free gift would just give me like explosive diarrhea it's <laughs> I, it's a I, lot I, worse I than people out. realize i read an article about the oprah everyone knows that you get a car you get a car yeah, that was like yeah, a yeah. nightmare for everybody because they all had to pay one third income tax on the value of all those cars so most people ended up trying to sell them you so, get a tax bill. You, you get, get a, a tax, tax bill. bill. You all get tax bill. You get an audit. And you get an audit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You get so, an audit. <laughs> the, free, the free car thing is not as fun as people think it is, unfortunately. The thought that you could have taken the, the money that you would put in Tesla stocks for yeah. the deposit of the Roadster just kind of like... Was it the deposit or the full price? Founder, if the, the founder the, series is a quarter mil. Mm-hmm. God. But if you did just like, the non-founder series, that was fifty k to put a deposit down. That would be close to six hundred k now if you had invested that in wow. Tesla stock, which could in return buy multiple roadsters. So and pay the taxes and pay, the taxes. And pay its taxes. So the the lesson is you're better off investing in the stock than the reservation. You're better off investing in Tesla than buying a Tesla. Pretty much, you can use the money. So how's that Model Three looking for you, Randy? Yeah, you must be close. I got it. Uh, high hindsight, uh, <laughs> I, I must be close. I mean, hindsight, I got it on. A, I got it on quite the sell. Good, good, good. High insight. I mean the car. I mean the car's paid off. So I, was, I don't yeah. know. But I mean, if I forgot, in, I forgot how much. In return, like the profits of your Tesla stock will probably end up covering what you ended up paying for your Model Three before. The profits in my Tesla stock alone, I think I can get another Model Three outright or something like that. It's something like that. I but I don't look at the day to days anymore. It's more like it's Tesla is my ten year my ten year plan. Yeah, if that makes sense. Like. It's I, I I it's cool yeah. that it's blown up the way. Yeah, I would say Cybertruck. I, I could buy plan. another that's, Model Three. <laughs> that's better. Yep. <laughs> yep. If you're so in a situation if I, if I where you want right to buy a Cybertruck and money's that question, I think it's acceptable to transfer shares of Tesla stock into a Cybertruck. I consider that acceptable. The profits <laughs> will. I mean, the offsetting the. Co- I don't know. That's yeah. Wouldn't it be interesting that like, what if? If if you are an investor in Tesla, you get you can use 
you can use a share or something to that effect to like, um, no, I think I want to get uh, 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 the, the, the monthly subscription of this or, or, or I want uh, full self driving for that. Use it the way people uh, use like uh, cryptocurrency to pay towards something. Mm. It's like, I'm going to use my Be Tesla currency to pay. I don't think to Tesla wants to my encourage Tesla. people to sell their stock, though. Yeah, exactly. That, that's that's kind of what it keep, creates. Supply and demand is keeping it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They should do another capital gains, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think we talked so. about that last week. Who knows? They might by the time this yeah. goes live. But, yeah, I, I think yeah. it would be justified. I'm just like, get as many, get all these factories up. Like, we don't need to just do two at a time. Let's do four or five at a time, you know? Let's get all these construction crews going. Elon can only sleep in so many. <laughs> <Yeah. things. laughs> that's like the, that's like the, uh, what's the term? <laughs> You know when they break the bottle the on the ship? The limiting factor. When the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the ship the goes to... the What's the term? It's christening. Christening. It's christening of a ship. Elon has to christen each factory by slip, sleeping on the floor at each location. <laughs> yes, you want to sleep, sleep in each conference room. <laughs> There's like a very yeah, tiny couch. I'm going to sleep couch. on the floor. Yeah, it's like, no, 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 I'm going to sleep on the floor. There's more room. <laughs> I'm just imagining those giant rooms like in Giga Berlin where it's just like giant hallways of all these robots and things. Yeah. And he's just like on the concrete with a blanket. And he's like <laughs> with a bottle That's of Tesla Kila. the new factory. <laughs> he's got the Tesla Kila next to him. Oh, man. <laughs> and he's wearing his short shorts. Tesla. And that's. <laughs> oh, he totally wears and when he gets it gets cold, he takes the not the flamethrower. Yeah. And just to heat everything up. Let's hear Elon Musk. My, my grandpa was, was asking me. Uh, that's the <laughs> My grandpa was asking me where Elon lives. And I was like. No one really knows. Well, he, he sold all his property. He owned like an entire neighborhood in like yeah. Hollywood or Beverly Hills yep. or something. But he sold all that. Mm-hmm. I, we're pretty sure he just lives on his airplane now. My grandpa was like, wait, what? And I was like, yeah, you know, he lives, but where does he sleep? Yeah. I don't know. Does Wherever he sleep? I don't, I'm not sure if he sleeps, but, you know. <laughs> he I doesn't sleep. He recharges. He recharges. Right. He recharges. <laughs> I think he, he said on Joe Rogan. He doesn't Rogan. sleep. He waits. <laughs> yeah, he waits. I think he said on Joe Rogan that he's renting now. So oh, okay. we have no clue well, where. Sometimes he'll stay in one of the Boca Chica village houses. In spa- when he's down in Boca Chica, yeah. he'll stay in one of the houses that the test- that, uh, SpaceX bought. When he's, you know, at Giga Berlin, he'll sleep in a conference room. Mm-hmm. I, and he has to have a bed in his golf stream. So. But my question is, where is your mailing address? Yeah, that's the real question. <laughs> to email. Does address. Elon need mail? <laughs> I mean, for the he U.S. Is, government, you need to have a mailing address. That's not a P.O. I'm box. guessing it's Make some, it one Tesla away. What if it's something really tiny? You know, it's like a 2-1 in Austin somewhere that's like $900 a month. <laughs> And he just has that for his mail for legality reasons. It just shows oh, up there. Funny. <laughs> he like never stays there. I would not want to be Elon's tax accountant. That is for sure. Oh, man. So, Elon, we have to calculate where your primary residence is this year. Uh, how many, what was, what, where did you spend the longest? What, uh, uh, what state did you spend the longest in? Mars. 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 Oh, okay. I don't know how those taxes work. <laughs> yeah, just how do you tax Mars. Mars? No problem. Yeah. Nail it tomorrow. Forward it on. Mm. Mm. Well, any <sighs> closing thoughts, well, gents? Randy needs to get the Cybertruck ASAP. Yep. I'm, I'm really excited about the Cybertruck, guys. It's all on you. I'm getting really, really excited about the Cybertruck. We're okay. all doomed if you Woo! don't get it. That's it. it. All right, guys. Yeah. Have a great week. Hopefully the Model S and X are refreshed next week. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.